Well, hey, glad, glad you're here this morning. Uh, if you have a Bible, please turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. We are, we are going to be in verses 12 through 20 this morning. And if you came here this morning to, to actually hear a, a Mother's Day sermon, I just want to let you up front know uh, that today is not a Mother's Day sermon. Um, today we'll be, we will actually be talking about men sleeping with prostitutes. And so moms, uh, this is not your message necessarily uh, today for you. <laughs> So, um, but yeah, if you have a Bible, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 12 through 20, uh, we are glad that you are here with us. If you don't have a Bible, there, there should be a Bible on the inside chair of each row. Uh, feel free to follow along there, or you can follow along on the screen behind me. But today's message, the title of today's message is that our bodies belong to Jesus. Our bodies belong to Jesus. And so read with me verses 12 through 20 this morning in chapter 6. Paul writes, Everything is permissible for me, but not everything is beneficial. Everything is permissible for, permissible for me, but I will not be mastered by anything. Food is for the stomach, and the stomach for food, and God will do away with both of them. However, the body is not for sexual immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. God raised up the Lord and will also raise us up by His power. Don't you know that your bodies are a part of Christ's body? So should I take a part of Christ's body and make it a part of a prostitute? Absolutely not. Don't you know that anyone joined to a prostitute is one body with her? For Scripture says the two will become one flesh, but anyone joined to the Lord is one spirit with Him. Flee sexual morality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body, but the person who is sexually immoral sins against his own body. Don't you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God. You are not your own, for you are bought at a price. So glorify God with your body. Father, we just come to you this morning, and Lord, we, we just ask today as we look into your word, God, in a text that is really um, difficult and really wild, God, we just ask that you would just help us to apply it to our lives, Father. God, I ask today that you would help me to preach your word in a way that is faithful, that is clear, God, and that helps your people understand your truth. Lord, we just ask that you would move in our hearts today, and we ask all these things in your name. Amen. Again, the title of, of today's message is, is Our Bodies Belong to Jesus. The Corinthians, they lived in a culture that, that had no restraints. This, this city, Corinth, it was, it was a place where people were really, really out of control. Really before there, there was Vegas, there was Corinth. Corinth was the original sin city. Corinth was wild. It was wicked, and it was an immoral place, especially when it came to sexual conduct. The citizens of, the citizens of Corinth disregarded sexual rules. They saw themselves as free to do whatever they wanted to do sexually. This is a lot like our culture today. That people see themselves as free to have sex with whomever they want to, whenever they want to, and however they want to. Our culture today has no restraints. Sadly for, the, for these Corinthians, this free mindset had, had made its way into the church. It had been reported to Paul that there was not only a man sleeping with his father's wife but that, were, that there were Christian men in the church sleeping with prostitutes. 
If that wasn't bad enough, they even had a saying to defend their actions. They argued that everything is permissible for me. Everything is acceptable. Everything is allowed for me. Some of the Christians at Corinth had the mindset that because God had saved them, they were free to do all things. Some of you may be here this morning and have that same mindset. It may not be to the extreme that you are sleeping with prostitutes, but there are things you do with your body that are not pleasing to the Lord. And yet you justify them by doing them because of God's grace in your life. If we're, being, if we're being honest this morning, we all have had this mindset at some point in our life. We all have, have done things, done, we have done this at one point or another. And so really what Paul has to say in this passage really applies to all of us. We all need to hear what God's Word has to say to us this morning because we all are prone to abuse God's grace in our life. We all are prone to abuse the freedom that we have in Christ. And so even though this text is talking about men sleeping with prostitutes, it's really pointing to how you use your freedom in Christ. And so this is a message that we all need to, to listen into. That, that our hearts need to be open to because it applies to every one of us. As Christians, even though we are free in Christ, that does not give us the right to do whatever we want to do in this life. That is, that is sometimes what Christians are known for. But Paul warns us here, not everything is beneficial. Not, not everything is, is produces a good result in your life. Not everything is, is helpful for you in your walk with Christ. And he, he warns us that in our freedom, we, we must be careful because we can easily become mastered, come under the control of other things rather than Christ himself. And so for the Corinthians, they, they needed to know this especially with their bodies. They needed to know that they weren't just free to do whatever with their bodies, but that their bodies were for Jesus. And so in verses 13 and 14 here, Paul, the first thing that he tells these men is, is that your body is for Jesus. Christian, your body is for Jesus. The idea of the body during, during the time of the Corinthians was, it was unique. Today, for the most part, we, we consider the body as something good. Many of you exercise in here. If, if you don't exercise, many of you watch what you eat. Right? You, you have a strict diet. I mean, we can, we can see this in the push for, for organic food and in all things natural. And really, there is a sense in our culture of really caring and nurturing and, and valuing the body. But at, at this time, the time of the Corinthians, the body was not viewed as, as something good. It was actually considered to be evil and worthless. During this time, they had a saying about the body. They said, the body is a tomb. So one soul was, was of great value, but, but to them, the body really didn't matter at all. The body was just something for this earth. It wasn't for eternity. And so this belief had, had led many to torture their bodies, to not give good things to their bodies in, during the time of the Corinthians because they saw it as something evil. But it also led many to give everything to their body. That really whatever that they desired, they did. And so for these Christian men in Corinth who were sleeping with prostitutes, they summed up what they were doing by saying food is for the stomach and the stomach for food. 
They were saying food satisfies our hunger cravings and prostitutes satisfies our sexual cravings. Just as normal, just as it is normal to eat food when, when we are hungry, it is normal for us to have sex when our bodies desire it. That's, that's what these men were saying. That, that, that's what their view and argument was to the Apostle Paul. And so how many of you have, have heard that before in your life? You may be like, man, I've, I've actually never heard that. But let me, let me focus in on, on our youth today, our, our high schoolers and our college students. Maybe, maybe you've heard it's normal. That this is the normal time to experience sex. To kind of test things out, to go farther than you ever have in your life. Maybe for, for some of you, you adults, you've heard that it's, that it's normal. It's, it's okay to sleep with someone before, before you marry them. That it's, that it's normal for men to really have, have no self-control. Listen, our culture in, in all of these things are screaming to us that, that our bodies really don't matter at all. What we do with our bodies doesn't really matter at all. But Paul here, he, he corrects these men. He points out to them that they are talking about two things that don't even belong in the same category. He first says that food and cravings of the stomachs are temporary. There in verse 13, he says, Food is for the stomach and the stomach for food, and God will do away with both of them. Food and cravings of the stomach are, are temporary. They're, they're here today and they, they will be gone tomorrow. God will do away with them. However, the body is not. The body is eternal. Paul says here, the body is for the Lord. And so this means what you do with your body matters. That your body, what you do with your body has eternal consequences. Each one of us here today are, was created by God, in the image of God, and, and for God. And so one, the, what that means is you were created to know Him, to walk with Him, and then to enjoy all His blessings. And one of those blessings was sex, is sex. We're all adults here. We, we can talk about sex. God created sex. And what I say here is, is a biblical statement, so don't point the finger at me. But sex is very good. God created it. And so he has created it and blessed us with it, though, to be enjoyed between one man and one woman in the covenant of marriage. Paul makes it clear here, the body was not created for sexual morality. Listen, you were not created for premarital sex. You weren't created for homosexuality. You weren't created for adul adultery, prostitution, any sexual immorality. Your body was not created for, them, for those things. Those things ultimately lead us to be empty and broken. They ultimately lead us to, to feel pain and suffering, both spiritually, emotionally, and physically. Listen, sexual immorality destroys families. And it will destroy your life, both now and for eternity, if you let it. Listen, the body, Paul makes it clear that the body is not created for sexual morality. God hates it. As we saw back in, back in chapter 6, people who are, who are living in sexual immorality will not inherit, God, inherit God's kingdom. Only those who turn from sexual morality, only those who leave it and trust in Jesus, those are the ones who will inherit the kingdom of God. But remember who Paul is, is talking to here. Paul, Paul isn't just talking to any, to any men here. 
Paul is actually talking to Christian men. Paul is talking to those who are in fellowship with Christ, those who have turned from their sins and trusted in his death and resurrection for him. And so in the truest sense, these men's bodies are for the Lord. Their bodies belong to Jesus. And so if you're a Christian here today, you need to know your body is for Jesus. It is not for yourself. How much so, Paul tells us in verse 14. He says, God raised up the Lord and will also raise us up by His power. That's how much your body is for Jesus. Is that just as God raised up the body of Jesus to eternal life, so will He raise your body to eternal life by His power. Christian, in the end... In the end, your body will be a testimony and a witness of the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Your body will be a testimony and a witness to the world of the power of the resurrected Jesus with your body rising in the end. And so what that means for, for every Christian here today is, is because that is true for your body in the end, it is also to be true of your body now. That's how much your body belongs to Christ. And so this means our bodies are not forced in. They are, they are for Jesus. They are to be used as instruments. They are to be used as the, the, the hands and the feet of Jesus in our lives. And so Paul spelled this out in a more detailed way, in a detailed way in Romans 6, 13, what I read earlier. He said, don't present the parts of your body to sin as instruments of wickedness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life. And present the parts of your body to Him as instruments of righteousness. And so youth, young adults, listen, today is a day to present your body to Christ as an instrument for righteousness. Today is a day for you to, to, to present your bodies to be a witness and a testimony to your friends, to those who you're in school with, to, to those who are all around you that, that your body is for Jesus. Listen, you can, you can be a testimony and a witness to those who don't know Christ around you that, that God's way is a way that leads to joy is a way that actually leads to true love, the, the way that leads to true satisfaction. And so youth, you have, God cares so much about your body that he sent, your, that he sent his son to save it. The gospel is that, that Jesus didn't just save our souls. The gospel tells that Jesus saved everything about us. So that means He is to be Lord over all. He is to be Lord over all of our bodies. And so adults, who are you presenting your body to this morning? Are you presenting your body to Christ who rose from the dead, who has secured your eternal salvation? Are you presenting your body to something that is wicked, something that, that is evil, something that displeases the Lord. Listen, your body is for Jesus Christ. Paul isn't done with these men, though. He continues addressing they, their sinful, sinful behavior on a, really on a deeper, deeper level in verses 15 through 17. And in verses 15, 15 and 17, Paul, Paul not only tells them your body isn't just for Jesus, but, but that your body is one with Jesus. Your body is one with Jesus. And so in verse 15, he, he says, don't you know that your bodies are a part of Christ's body? 
in asking this question, Paul is not looking for an answer, but, but he's rather making a point to these Christian men in Corinth who are sleeping with prostitutes. And the truth that he is pointing out to them is that their bodies are one with Jesus. And so being a part of Christ's body means you actually have fellowship with Christ. That's what it means to, to be saved, is that, that you were rescued from, from being separated from God, but now, because of Jesus, you have fellowship with God. And so what 1 Corinthians 1.9 says is true for every Christian here today. That you were called by Him into fellowship with His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The moment you responded to, to Jesus in faith, you entered into fellowship with Him. This means you are no longer far from Christ, but Christ lives in you. Jesus calls us daily to remain in me and I in you. And he has promised all of us, every Christian here today, that I will be with you always. And so though Jesus isn't here physically, his spirit lives in our bodies. We, we are truly one with Christ. And so because that, that is true for every Christian here today, and because that was true for these Christian men, Paul then goes on to ask the question, so should I take a part of Christ's body and make it a part of a prostitute? Absolutely not, he says. And so these men had forgotten that wherever they went, Christ was with them. By taking their bodies to prostitutes, they made what belongs to Christ, which was their bodies, and Christ himself a part of prostitutes. At this time, there, were, there was a temple that the Corinthians would go and worship at, and there were around a thousand prostitutes there at the temple ready for sexual activity. And so what these men were doing, they were taking Christ himself with their bodies belonged to Christ to all of these prostitutes and made Christ a part of that action. And that's why Paul says, absolutely not. May this never happen for a Christian. May this never happen for Christ that he would be brought to be part of prostitutes. And so church, how, 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 does this, how does this apply for us today? If I had to guess, there's, there's probably not a person here today sleeping with prostitutes. I may be wrong, but if I had to guess, that's my guess. But how this, how this applies to us today is, is you must remember that wherever you go, Christ is with you. Whatever you do, Christ is there with you. Whatever your eyes are looking at, whatever your ears are listening to, Christ is right there with you. You, your body, is one with Jesus Christ. And so we, we should not drag our Savior, the one, the one who is holy and, and who is righteous, we should not drag him into to wicked things in our lives. Because Christ is holy and because Christ is righteous, that means we are holy and we are righteous. We shouldn't drag Jesus, our Savior, the one who has committed himself to us, the one who has loved us and is faithful to us. We shouldn't drag him and drag our bodies that belong to him in, into things that are displeasing and are wicked in his sight. And so Paul, Paul in verse 16 says, don't, don't you know that anyone joined to a prostitute is one body with her? For scripture says the two will become one flesh. The danger in sexual immorality is this, that, that sexual intercourse, sexual activity isn't just recreational. It's, it isn't a game. 
It is the most unifying thing that you can do in your life. Listen, sex brings a man and a woman together in a way that nothing else does in this world. And so by us, by us involving ourselves in sexual Im immorality, what we are doing is that we are really submitting our lives. We are, we are bonding our, our spiritual life, our mental life, our emotional life, and even our physical life to someone other than Christ. And so what that means is you, you become so attached, you can become so under control of another person other than Christ Jesus himself. And so sex, sexual immorality is something not to be, to be played with. It is, it is not a game. It is something that, that, can, that can truly control our life and destroy our life. And so the reality, the reality is there, there may be some of you today that are here that are trapped in this. That there may be some of you here today that, that right now you are involved in sexual immorality. That you have, you have taken your body that belongs to Christ and, and, and brought it underneath the control and submission of something else other than Him. But if that's, if that's you this morning and, and you're a Christian, remember Paul is talking to Christians here. Paul gives, us, Paul gives us some hope. He says in verse, verse 17, But anyone joined to the Lord is one spirit with Him. And so though you may be involved in things that, that God hates, that Christ doesn't belong in at all, listen, Christian, that does not separate you f from being one with Jesus. That doesn't separate you from, from His love and His faithfulness. That doesn't separate you from, from knowing Christ in an intimate way and having a relationship with Him. It does mean you, you, need to, you need to hear the warning that He has to say here is that you should no longer live in this, but, but, but I want to encourage you this morning, if, if that's you, Listen, if you're joined to the Lord, you are one spirit with Him. And so let, let His faithfulness to you, let His love for you drive you to be done with the sexual morality in your life. Let it, let it move you and encourage you to be in fellowship with Him and to honor Him with your body and to worship Him with your body rather than defile it and bring dishonor and shame to His name. And so what that, what that means for you, and really for all of us, if we are caught up in sexual morality, is to do what Paul says in verses 18 through 20. He says, flee sexual immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body. But the person who is sexually immoral sins against his own body. If you are caught up in sexual immorality today, God's Word tells you not to just, not to just uh, separate yourself a little bit from it, but God's Word says actually flee from it. That means to run away from it. That means to, to move yourself to safety. Too many Christians like to play around with sexual morality. And listen, what always ends up happening is they fall into the trap of it. There's a reason why God says flee sexual morality. It's because you and I don't have the power to withstand it. You and I aren't strong enough to play games with it. And so Paul says, flee from it. Run away from it. Seek safety. 
Because every other sin a person commits is outside the body, but the person who is sexually immoral sins against their own body. This verse is truly hard to understand because when you think about other sins that can happen and other sins that we can do, we, we know that there are other things that we can harm our bodies with. But what Paul is, is making clear here and what God's Word makes clear is that sexual sin is the most damaging sin that you can do to your body. Sexual sin is the most damaging sin that you can be a part of in damaging your body. One, because you, you actually use your body for it. Other sins, you use things outside of your body, but sexual sin, you actually use your physical body for. And again, we should, we should remember what Paul said just earlier, that, that sexual morality, that sex joins, joins someone in the most, two people in the most intimate and deep way. I loved how the commentary that I, that I read said it. Because sexual intimacy is the, deepest, is the deepest uniting of two persons, it, its misuse corrupts the deepest human level. And so Paul, Paul ends by saying, don't, don't you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God. Don't you know, again, this is something that the, that the Corinthians should have known. They should have known that their bodies were not a tomb, but that it was, it was a temple. And so just as the temple in the Old Testament, the presence of God was in it, if you're a believer here today, your, your body is the temple, the the place where God presence, the God lives in you. And so that means that this temple, this body that we have, we are to, to treasure it. We are to care for it. We are to nurture it. We are to use our body for Christ because He actually lives in us. And so this all came about not because of anything that, that we did, not because, because anything that someone else did for us, but because Christ Himself laid down His life. Because Christ bled on a cross for all of our sins and rose from the grave purchasing our body and reconciling our bodies to Himself so that we would be one with Him. And so we are, we are to not, as Paul says, we are to not use our bodies for sexual immorality, but to glorify God with them. And so as Ashley and, and, and the band comes up this morning, I want to ask you this morning, as Paul said in Romans 6, what, what are you using your body for? Christians are, are to use their bodies as service to the Lord. We are to carry Christ to others. We are to use our bodies for sin because Christ has saved us from it and now He lives in us. And so today, maybe, maybe you haven't been presenting your body to Christ in the way you should. And so today is, is the day that you need to, to commit yourself and to commit your body to serving Jesus Christ. To no longer serve sexual immorality, but to serve Him. But maybe some of you today have, are truly trapped in, in sexual sin. That it has a power and grip over your life. And what you need to know is that Jesus is the only one who can set you free from that. Jesus' death not, not only forgave us of our sins, but Jesus' death freed us from the power of sin. And so if you're here this morning and you haven't turned to Christ, if you're here this morning and you are looking to, to be free from, from sexual sin, Christ 
is the only one that can do that for you. And so today, would, would, you, would you come to Him as one who is needy and who is broken and one who is, who is powerless? And would you trust all of yourself to Him? If that is you this, this morning, I, I just want to lead us through, lead you through, through a simple prayer to, to you confess, to, to you to confessing that to the Lord. After, after I lead us in this prayer, I, I just want to pray over our church that, that we would never forget that Christ is with us, that we are one with Him in our lives. And so please pray with me. For the person that, that wants to accept Christ this morning. Lord, you know my sin. Lord, you know that what I have done is displeasing in your eyes. And Lord, I confess today on my own, I, can, I cannot get out of, it, out of it without your help. So Lord, I am asking today, today that you would save my life. Jesus, today I'm trusting that you died on the cross for my sins. Lord, that you rose to purchase my body for eternity. If today you gave your life to Christ, would you please fill out one of the connect cards and let Pastor Tyler know or myself know or Pastor Shannon. We want to celebrate what Christ has done for you in your life. But we also want, want to help you. We want to walk with you. Because sexual sin is truly a sin that is hard to overcome on our own. And so I just ask that you would share that with someone today. That you would be bold enough to confess that to someone today and ask for help. Father, I just pray that you would help us as your people as those that you have purchased, those who are one with you, God, that you would help us to remember that we are, that wherever we go, whatever we do, Lord, you are right there with us. And Lord, because you have committed yourself to us, that because you live in us, God, that you would help us to honor you, knowing that our bodies belong to you, not to ourselves. Lord, I ask all these things in your name. Amen.